have been a part of the Cheese Board Cooperative for 44 years now. I came to California from Ohio when I was in my middle 20s in order to work off alternative service to the draft uh, during the Vietnam War as a conscientious objector to the war itself. And I moved uh, to Berkeley and worked in community service for uh, several years in a hospital. During that time, uh, I met some people who were at the Cheese Board Cooperative. It wasn't actually a cooperative in the very beginning. It was uh, started as a small ma and pa store uh, selling cheese in 1967. By 1970-71, the owners, Sahak and Elizabeth, suggested that because they were already paying their employees the same wage they were taking themselves. Why don't we just turn this into a cooperative, or the term that they used in those days was a collective. It was a, an immediate success. When I tell my friends I'm going to cheese board, they're like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. Bring me back a piece. It's, it's like a well-known place that people want to be a part of. It's like, a, it is a community here. The Bay Area is an expensive place to live. You don't need a lot of money to come here. You can just come and sit and eat a slice of pizza. You share a table with people. You hear nice music. You know, weather is wonderful. I didn't really know anything about this place until I went uh, to middle school and uh, I used to have to walk back and forth and I used to see the lines here and I will always wonder what's in this place where people who are sitting outside where it's raining cats and dogs and people still sitting outside so I finally came here and realized it was vegetarian pizza and I'm a meat eater so I'm like what the hell is this? <laughs> We started out with a, you know, a very homogeneous group, kind of radical hippies or something, back in um, the early 70s. But it has been a goal of ours to become more diverse, to reflect the greater population. The biggest criterion to be here is that you want to be here. You want to be part of this kind of uh, alternative political or governing body where we look at capitalism as not the only possible way that you can have, make a living. We want to. <clears throat> people that have <coughs> all kinds of skills to come and share their skills with us. We make uh, $24 an hour. We all make the same wage, um, regardless of how long you've been here. So that's kind of unusual. And then at the end of the year, we split up the profit. No, also not based on seniority, which might be, or investment, which would be the traditional way of splitting up profit, but on the number of hours each person worked. We make about in profit um, probably over a million dollars a year. It's a lot of money if someone owned this business. It's a lot of money to me. But then we split up among 65 members. It becomes a, a modest amount of money for each person. And so it comes out to about another um, 10, 11 dollars per hour. The cheese board work on kind of a anarchic kind of model of um, equal pay for equal work. It's an hourly pay. It doesn't matter what kind of job you do. Usually if you come from another kind of uh, workplace, you would see that you have an employer or a manager. And then on the other hand, you have an employee that does what the manager says. And any input that comes from the employee is kind of looked down or ignored. It's bad for the employee, it's bad for the business. And so the idea within the cheese board, I feel, is that all the job is equally paid, but also all the jobs are rotated. At other places I've used to work, like 
you do the exact same thing every single day over and over and over again and this is so much variety um, and it's super nice to just be able to learn and do so many different things every single day. You know in all of the jobs that I have had in the past I always used to think to myself like oh you know if I was the owner how would I do it differently but it just ends up being that I found this type of business where um, I don't have to be like a rich millionaire starting an own company in order to like have a say in my place of work. I think that we all work a little harder and care a little bit more because it is ours and when we do well, we, we as individuals also get to benefit from that. And when I was a manager at a different business, I never liked punishing people or bossing people around. It's not in my personality. So it's a better fit for me personally to be in a workspace that's non-hierarchical and where we all just kind of make decisions as a group for what's best. There are so many places I've worked where I was one of the few people of color and the people who were in charge were often white men. And I think there's something about that that sets the tone of who has power and who doesn't. One thing that's been really good about working here is that it just the way the structure is set up, everyone is equal. So even though it might feel like the power is necessarily shared completely equally, it is so much better than other places. And you know, I'm an immigrant and a woman of color, and this is one of the most empowering places I've ever I've spent 28 years in the food service. I've never had paid time off, never had um, health care paid for, and I've never had it covered for me. And that I was able to get health care from day one, $400 a month that I didn't have to pay you know, out of my own pocket. We allow people to be flexible with the schedules. I guess the majority work around 40 hours, 35 to 40 hours. But if people need less or more, they have a proposal ready for the group at the monthly meeting and then people are usually nice. And, and the reason is always the same because you will never know what life brings to you. And so, you know, one day they might need, one day I might need. You know, like for example, I. Uh, five, six years ago, I was working like 50, 60 hours because, you know, I was single and no kids and I was like, um, I want to do this, my business, more money for me and now I have a son, so I would like to spend more time for, with my son, so I try to work 35, 40 hours and so I can spend more time with my, when my son grows up. That's, that's all. The reasons, in my personal opinion, that we have been as successful as a cooperative uh, ourselves is because every four or five years we decided to try something new. For example, the business started just as a cheese store, but uh, pretty quickly people realized that uh, with cheese, bread went uh, very easily uh, in the palate, and so. We started baking breads and selling it at the store. Uh, eventually, years later, we decided to combine the bread and the cheese and make a pizza. We decided that uh, even though we didn't want to continue to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, we would try and duplicate ourselves. We basically franchise ourselves with the idea of starting another cooperative that would have the same kind of rewarding life and community building aspect that we have found. We called it the Arismendi uh, Cooperative uh, because of uh, the name of a famous Spanish priest 
who started a cooperative movement in Spain, which we admired greatly. There are five different bakeries, call, all colored heirs, Mindy, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Cheese Board was the original co-op, and we approached them and we said, we'd like to start new businesses based on your model. Would you support us in doing that? And they were incredibly generous in helping, providing recipes, providing training, allowing their name to be used, and they still mem maintained their membership since then. In the United States, there's been, among progressive people, there's been very much an, a perspective that small is beautiful and that's the only thing that you should do. Becoming big is a problem. And for us, we, were, we kind of think that if you're only small, then you're also marginal, and you're not really helping out with larger social needs. So we wanted to find a way that co-ops could stay small and serve in their, their immediate community, but network such that they could have an effect on the overall society. In the last decade or so, we've seen a great increase in interest in using the cooperative business model uh, for workers to empower themselves in the economy. Um, in fact, just last year, the U.S. Congress passed a law called the Main Street Employee Ownership Act that directed the federal government to make technical assistance in financing available to people who wanted to use worker cooperatives as a business model. Uh, we're excited about this because just like in many places across the globe, in the United States, we are experiencing increased inequality. Uh, we certainly recognize that people, many people, feel that uh, they're losing their place in the economy. And worker co-ops are one of the best strategies for people to, again, uh, take control. Take control of their work life, take control of their workplace, so that, um, so that they can take care of their families and take care of their communities. Even though we are attempting to build the idealistic community in which to live, and we're working hard to do so, and we're sharing uh, all of the things that we have to offer, we're still made up of people that are human beings that have their flaws. We all have our flaws. And uh, so, because of those flaws, uh, there are conflicts. The larger you get, in some ways, the harder it is to make a community that uh, shares all of the same ideals. At the Cheese Board, when we make decisions, we have uh, four levels of decision making. You can say yes. You can vote yes. You can vote abstain. You can abstain and not vote. You can vote no, or you can vote a hard no. And a hard no is like a blocking no. And in order to use, to stop something, you have to have a very, very important moral reason that you could not work here if this happened. And we have a facilitator come and help us organize our meetings. We have, um, and at first I was kind of hesitant about it because I like the fact that we self-facilitated and it seemed very private. But in the end, I think it, uh, it's helped the group a lot come to move forward and make decisions because the bigger we get, the harder it is to kind of corral the group. I'm not a worker owner, so I don't have a stake in the decisions. Like, I never care what decision the group makes. I care that the group makes the best decision for the group. So oh, that's sometimes I think the role I can bring is, is to bring the outside perspective. Of, oh, do you remember four years ago when you didn't have this? And do you remember all the work you did to get this? And when I first came in, the cooperative was, was pretty big, not as big as it is now. Um, but it was using a lot of the practices from when it was smaller and they didn't meet the needs of the bigger co-op. And what I've gotten to see over the span of seven years is the co-op really get a better sense of what are our needs now. I think they've come to the realization we need more structure than we had and we need more things written down to refer back to than we had. Um, and then I get to help them to meet those needs and it's really beautiful to see, yeah. You're really vulnerable to a, uh, to a couple people who could be really negative, can really bring a, a business like this down, amazingly. 
I think that's a that's a problem to confront. Also, and the more committed people you have, the more successful you could be too. So you're you're somewhat at the mercy of the constellation of people that you put together. As opposed to a traditional business, you just fire the ones that don't work out. It's harder for a cooperative. So I think that's something we learned. Well, sometimes I think about the, you know, cheese board is like being part of a big family. So that means that we're, we function and we don't function. You know, we argue and we love each other. And so much of the cheese board is like that. But it is also this thing where you can get up in the morning and you can look in the mirror and feel like I have done as little harm as I can. I have actually, what I do here is try to make things better. I can't say in a big way necessarily what I believe uh, uh, and what kind of society I want to live in. But if I show it, uh, that's a pretty powerful statement. And that's why I'm still at the cooperative after 44 years. But it's my community, it's my family, it's my extended family now. And so I don't, I don't want to leave it, even though I don't want to work as hard as I did when I was young. And so, uh, and I want to show more and more people uh, the advantages of working cooperatively rather than competitively. Whether it will be successful in the end, nobody knows. <laughs>